What up guys? I'm back on Facebook today because YouTube let me down. I did a wonderful stream yesterday and YouTube, it went live, audio was good, and then when the processing happened, I lost reception and YouTube morphed my videos. There was no audio on like the last 40 something minutes of it, but it's okay. So we're back on Facebook, good old trustworthy Facebook. Um, and today we're gonna talk about five lessons from the college football uh, national championship from last night, Alabama versus Georgia, and Alabama came back and beat Georgia. Oh, oh, it was so sad. Um, so today we're going to be talking about lessons of that. This is part one. My break is too short to do the whole video right now. So part one, part two coming at you later today. But part one, um, lessons from this college football championship for you students and for you pre-meds. Casey, hello. John, hello. Lutham, hello. Um, <clears throat> Number one is it doesn't matter where you start. If you guys are watching the game, Georgia was dominating, Alabama looked lost, they looked frustrated, all these things. At the same time, Alabama never gave up. They kept making adjustments, they kept playing the game, kept just kind of chipping away at it, a field goal here, a stop here, and in the end they were able to triumph and end on top. For many of you pre-meds, you guys get so caught up in where you're starting out. I'm not very smart. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to get to pre-med. I come from a pet family that's poor. I don't have, I'm starting from community college. I'm starting at a, a small liberal arts school, wherever your start is. In the end, you can come out ahead if you continue to work and grind and better yourself and recognize that you're behind, right? So Alabama recognized they were behind and they pressed. They switched quarterbacks to pass more. They did the things that were required to push forward. So you have to remember that if you are behind, whatever it might be in the beginning, you can still come out ahead, but you've got to work for it. So it doesn't matter where you start. Number two, <clears throat> you have to not be afraid to make the necessary changes to get you where you need to go. Alabama last night did something that people would have been killing Nick Saban for had it not worked out how it worked out. But he took out his two-year starter, Jalen Hurts, who gone like 25 and two, and replaced him at halftime with a true freshman, Tao Tatakala, blah, blah, blah. I don't even try to say his last name. <laughs> we'll call him TT for the purpose of this video. But to replace a starter who's gone 25 and two with someone who's a true freshman takes major cojones to do. But Nick Saban recognized we can't pass the ball. We need to be able to pass the ball. They're just sitting on the run, killing us. They prepared for this. We're gonna make a change that they're not expected. We're gonna go unconventional and put in a true freshman over the proven commodity and make things happen. And in the end, Georgia wasn't prepared to defend a pass game that was like that, someone that could pass at all, because Jalen Hurts can't pass to save his life. But they made that adjustment. They weren't afraid to maybe take a step back, right? He came in the game, Tal, he threw that pick early on, he threw the interception, but it was okay. He took a step back to take a step forward, and the playoffs, or in the, excuse me, in the overtime, they were able to come out on top. For many of you guys, you guys will struggle in your methodology. Maybe you study a certain way and you are so scared of change, right? You, you try something new and it, it's a struggle early on. You're like, ooh, it's a struggle. I'm going back to the way I was doing it before. The problem is we know that the way you've been doing before is not getting you the results you want. A change may be slower for the progression, but in the end, you're gonna come out ahead. So you've gotta recognize when a change needs to be made. Oh, I'm not, you know what, I'm, all this cramming I'm doing, it's not working for me, I gotta make a change. The way I'm going about taking notes, I gotta make a change. The way I'm going about pre-med, I gotta make a change. Whatever you're doing, you gotta recognize when changes need to be made and be bold about it. Expect there to be some growing pains with that change, but understand that that change, in the end, will get you ahead. You can't just keep doing the same stuff you're doing, expecting a different result, right? That's the definition of insane is the quote. You've got to be able to change it up and you've got to be confident enough to know, listen, something may be unconventional. This may not be what other people would do, but if it's gonna work for me, I've got to be willing to do it. And you've got to look for that thing that other people aren't doing that's gonna give you the edge. Does that make sense to everybody? Give me a like right now if that makes sense to you. <clears throat> I'm still, guys, battling this sickness. I am not sleeping enough to, to beat my sickness right now. So my voice is crazy. Um, the third thing that I learned uh, last night during the championship game was that if you don't improve, others will pass you up. 
right? No matter how good your natural talent is, no matter how strong your start of college is, if you don't keep working to improve and get better every single day, people are going to bypass you. And for you guys who have followed Alabama football, Jalen Hurts came in as this hot shot recruit, came in so athletic, so built, and all this kind of stuff. He's been a starter for two years, and the guy still can't pass the ball. How can you be the starting quarterback? You've been at Alabama, a program that's known for developing players. You've been there for two years. He looks the exact same as day one when he came there, throwing the ball. And the reason is, is because he rests on the run. Oh, I can run the ball. I can run the ball. I can run the ball. I don't need to worry about throwing it. It'd be all right. We're Alabama. We got a good defense. They'll cover it up for me. I can just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And he didn't progress. And then Alabama brought in a new freshman who can pass the rock. And people have been saying all year that the town guy looked better in practice all year. And now he gets a shot, gets in the game, and it shows you just how deficient Jalen Hurts is, how he has not progressed in his college game, and now he's been bypassed. And the sad thing is, is Jalen Hurts may never play again for Alabama, may not ever play again in college. Who knows? And it's all because he hasn't been working on his game and improving himself. For many of you pre-meds, you guys come in and you're like, oh, I'm strong at this, I'm good at this. And you don't seek to get better every day. You don't seek to improve yourself. Because you say, oh, I'm ahead. I'm better than everybody. I've been beating everybody in high school. I'll be fine in college. I've been beating everybody in community college. I'll be fine in college. I can just rest on what I've been doing, my prior knowledge, my prior approaches to things. And in the end, you'll see other students who used to be inferior to you, who didn't have the study skills you had, didn't have the grades you had, didn't have the extra you have, but they're out there hustling every single day to improve themselves and get better and strive for more. And in the end, they're going to come out ahead of you. That's what happens. And I see it all the time. I'll see people who go to fancy schools, go to Stanford. Oh, they're at Stanford for undergrad, right? And everybody pumps them up and tells them how smart they are. Oh my gosh, you're at Harvard. You're amazing. You're the smartest kid that's ever, ever lived. And they get to these places and they can't hang over the four years because they keep thinking to themselves that, oh, I got into Harvard, so I must be the greatest thing ever. And they don't work and recognize that it takes striving to continue to go. And one of the cool things that I really liked about Stanford Medical School, as a medical school, and I missed so much, was that it was a community of high achievers coming in. But when we first got there, the first thing the dean said to us was, we know you guys are all great in what you've done in the past. But here at Stanford, our bar is higher, and we expect you guys to continue to raise our bar and to get better and to help each other collectively to push each other to be great. And it happened. In this community, all these smart people, all these driven people, everyone kept pushing each other to go further, to do more and be better. And in the end result, everyone's game stepped up. So I think I really flourished at Stanford in that mindset because it was everybody was trying to get better. And you have to have that mindset of I'm going to get better. I can never stop getting better because I can always be caught, always be passed up and always lose my spot. Does that make sense? Um, Number one four is don't celebrate until you make it, right? You need to be in control of your emotions. If you guys watch Georgia's sideline, they acted like they won the game in the first half. It was over. Sideline penalties, everybody jumping around, high-fiving, people all like dancing on the sideline. <clears throat> and at the same time, Alabama sideline focused, game planning, getting the plan together, right, to come back. It wasn't over, and they kept going. And in the end, now look at Georgia. Mm, you lost because you got cocky, you got arrogant, and you were celebrating before the victory happened. And I've seen this happen to people with medical school. They get one admission, and they assume that all the other admissions are going to follow. And so they go to their interviews overconfident, the next ones, and they essentially like blow them off. Like, oh, I'm so great. I got an acceptance already. I'm better than this school. And so they'll go to inferior schools, technically, and they won't get the acceptances they thought they should have got because they were too busy celebrating that first acceptance. You guys have to stay on your grind until the very end and solidify it and make sure that it's going to happen for you. To make sure that you're going to get what you need to get. Don't assume it's a done deal and celebrate too early and end up jacked up in the end. And I think that kind of brings us to our final point. I thought I could do this in two videos. I'll do it in one. I think I got another minute here. I got another minute. We can do this. Um, the fifth thing is no one cares how close you were to winning, how close you were to medical school. 
I looked at some of the players for Georgia last night getting interviewed, and they were saying, oh, yeah, we were right there. We had the game. Next year, we'll be right back. But the sad thing is, is there's no guarantee they'll be back next year. Other teams might get better. They might lose some players. Injuries could happen. Anything could happen. No one gets credit for second place. Nobody gets credit for almost achieving it. There is no glory in saying, oh, yeah, I almost got into medical school. I got a couple secondaries. Um, I got a couple interviews, but I didn't quite get in. But be proud of me because I almost. No. Either you're in the medical school or you're not in the medical school. Right? And Mark just said it. It's Ricky Bobby. If you're not first, then you're last. And it's so true, guys. And people be like, oh, well, I got a B, so I'm happy with that. You can't be happy with that because the people who are getting to medical school are getting the A's. There is no almost medical school. It's either you're going to become a doctor or you're not going to become a doctor. That's the flat out truth. So if you want to walk through your undergrad settling and saying, oh, it almost happened or not quite, I'm doing just good enough, then what you're going to find is you're going to get to your application and you're going to be like, oh, I'm just short. You're going to have all these schools telling you, yeah, you've got a great resume, but you have a couple things you need to improve on instead of actually getting the acceptance. So no one cares how close you were. It's either you dominated undergrad or you didn't dominate. That's the two denominations. That's it. That's the end of the game. That's all of it. Alabama, national champs, extra money, extra swag. You go back to campus. Everyone wants to party with you. Georgia, you're losers. Period. Does that make sense to everybody? In your pre-med life, either you're going to do the work to be the champion or you're not going to do the work to be the champion. Do you want medical school or do you not want it? Are you going to be in the medical school or are you not going to be in the medical school? That is the bottom line. All right, so that's five things uh, from uh, lessons from the college football playoff championships. I've got to go back to work. I'm now officially late. Oh, gosh. You guys got me talking. Um, but uh, we'll be back for our regularly scheduled live stream uh, Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, I'll let you guys pick the topic again this week. That was kind of fun on Sunday. So we'll, you guys will pick the topic. Um, as always, make sure you guys like this video, share this video, get it around. And um, I'll come back to you guys live again, maybe later on today, to address some of the things that you guys asked on the live stream on Sunday uh, this week. But I hope everyone's having a wonderful week, and I hope their uh, start of the new semester is going well for the people who went back to school, people who are not back in school yet. I hope that you guys are using your time wisely um, to get prepared for the next semester. And Zach says, it's crazy that the Alabama special teams player who punched a Georgia player and then tried to fight his own coach stayed in the game. Yeah, that's what happens, right? But that's what happens. Productivity and talent trumps all. So you can try to fight somebody on the sideline, but if you're the best player, you're going to get to play. <laughs> that's what happens. People talk about, oh, well, you know, I went to this school. It's not as good of a school. It's what, well, if you produce, then it's A-OK. -okay. Produce, get the jobs done, and you'll be fine. All right. So everyone have a great day. Website, www.premanproductivity.com. Mark said, one-on-one -on -one coaching email soon. Uh, yes. So this week will be, I'm actually almost at capacity. So I'm actually going to close down coaching this week. So you will get, be getting a wait list from me or a, you were accepted into coaching uh, this week for everybody. So everyone have a great day. Back to work. I go later.